Hi everyone, this is Bradley. Today I'm going to talk about the loop function in animation nodes. When I started to learn animation nodes two months ago, I watched a series of tutorials by Jack Hickson, and at the time he made such a group of nodes to do such a function. So I have 9 cube array being generated here. And he uses a loop function. Uh, at the time, I was thinking can I go without a loop? So I use uh, so I plug in object to object and the vector to vector. And it works. The value has not been changed. So I started to wonder why he used a loop. The answer is that uh, according to many of animation nodes, uh, during development of animation nodes, many nodes start to be vectorized, which means they can receive multiple inputs and I will show you what it means. So if I select this node, instance node, and I hit W, go down to the viewer and uh, you can see its output. You can see it outputs a list of nine objects with the index starting from 0 to 8. But the there are some nodes cannot receive multiple inputs. For example, object instance node. Let's see, um, collection info. You can see uh, in my collection, I have cone, cube, sphere, three objects. And if you hit the viewer, you can also see it's inputting a list of three objects. And if I plug these objects into these places, you can see nothing happens. It's not doable because these sockets can only receive one input at a time, but for object transform output, it can just receive it. So this is the difference, and this is causes the difference about when we need a loop and when we do not need a loop. Let's look in at this example. So we can find a lot of values in this loop input, index, iteration, object, and vector. And you can see interesting in the sub program it actually says object list and vector list. So why the object list is corresponding to object, and this turns to be how the loop solves function for these nodes that cannot receive multiple inputs. If I hit the viewer and go to the object, you can see it only outputs a single object, which is the last object in the list, but it actually runs through all these objects during each loop, within each loop. So this is also where iteration kicks in. Iteration means a uh, number of times that this loop will be run. Because I input nine objects, so the iteration will be nine. The index has been shown at the beginning of this list. It starts from zero, so the final index will be eight, actually. So this is how it works. This is equally true to the vector. It will show the last vector, uh, but uh, if you look the vector here, it's a list of nine vectors. So what's parameter? If you try to add a value of parameters, you can see the vector list stays as vector list in the input, which means if I input that the same thing, it will be it will stay as a list of nine inputs. So this is the difference. So here's some things that I can show you to make this thing kind of weird. For example, now I cut everything. And I'm going to input a get list element. And if I put these vectors into this list, And I'm going to put this element to the location. So, which means I'm actually choosing a location from this list. And I'm going to put object to object socket. Then it basically what it does to assign all these nine objects to a location from this list. And I can assign the index to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is kind of weird dumb stuff that you can do.
the index does not have nine, so it actually just goes to the send off word. So this is how it works. But what if I put this index into this index socket? Then it will basically do the same thing as the initial stuff using all the iterators. You can see this it generates nine arrays, which means the loop will be run multiple times. So this is the idea. Can I make a loop without all this iterator? It's doable, and you will have a option of iteration. Initially, I think uh, this setting is very meaningless because if I'm inputting the same number all the time, then it will it should output the same number as well, I suppose. So what's the point to have multiple iterations in this case? And then later I realized, actually, I can change the number even if I'm not using the iterator because the index will change in each run of the loop. Let me show you. I can use a random vector and generate a list. So now I have a count. So now if I put this index into seed and put the vectors to vectors, iteration will increase the numbers or whatever. Maybe only it only have one or two iterations, but the seed has been changed all the time. So that the object has been going to different locations. So this is one way to make a loop function interesting without using iterator at all. This is what I think. And uh, for this part, is, I think this is done. In terms of new generator outputs, these thing you may or may not need to use. Uh, basically, if you run through a calculation of loop inputs, then it will output a number, and uh, it will show, for example, object list. What you can do is put this object to object list, and you can output whatever other things for example, objects, material output. So it will basically do its work. But uh, sometimes I don't need this output at all because I already output its transform or sometimes I'm generating object as I will show later. But uh, for this part, I think the basic part of loop has been done. So basically the loop can serve for these nodes that do not receive multiple inputs. And I'm going to show you how to actually, uh, an interesting way to use the loop function, or just kind of short demo. I'm going to clean up all these things. And I'm going to take a object mesh data. And I'm going to collection info. And go with the collection. And I put all the objects into this mesh object inputs, you can see it's not creating anything. And before I do anything further, let's just uh, show you how I would like to use these nodes. For example, now I have a cube, right? And I try this cube, um, point a uh, spline from points. So I put this vertex location into the points, I generate a spline, and a curve object output. So this spline will as a guide to generate a real spline, a real curve. So now if I turn this off, you can see I generated a curve connecting all these vertex. If I enable the bevel depth, you can see this is a very interesting geometry. And then now I would like to make such a function to all these objects within this collection, cone and sphere, and the cube. But I cannot do this, it just do not receive any inputs. So what I can actually do is where the loop to the kick in. If I loop through object, then I can put an object in. And at this moment, you can see it's actually not working properly. It only outputted the curve for a sphere. Why is that? It's because uh, I run this loop for three times and it, 
and each time it will write a target curve, which means the last uh, tar but the object always calls itself a target, which means the last calculation will actually override the previous two calculations. So this idea. So I need uh, the object list. Because I need three curves instead of one curve. I can use a object instance and put the object to instances. It will instantaneously generate a get the list length. So in this list I have three objects, so the list length will also be three. So this is the idea. I will enable the deep copy. Uh, I do not understand what's this point, uh, what's this button really for. It says copy mesh data. Um, but I'm actually not really familiar with the meaning of these things. If you would like to know more about these things, you can read the menu. I will put the link uh, in the description. But so far, I, I, from my experience, I know this will work only if you enable this deep copy. So I will input, uh, enable this object to object list and I will select the target. So now I actually generate three curves. I can actually copy four objects. So now I'm generating three targets and I will enable this target to target. And then everything works. Just for knowledge, if I disable this deep copy, everything will go back to sphere again. Uh, again, I do not clearly understand the, the meaning of deep copy, but uh, you can read the menu for that. So this is it. Um, so in the future, I will never explain the function of the loop function at all. So this will be the ultimate reference about why I use a loop and why not use a loop. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time. Ciao.